And what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for the day. If you're new to the channel, uninitiated or unfamiliar, I do 3D printing here at home. Things for around the house to improve my life, exhibition prints, things to sell for money, things that hopefully you're interested in enough to where you will subscribe to the channel. What am I working on today? Didn't really plan on vlogging today. And again, this is a vlog episode, so it's kind of just showcasing what I got going on in no particular order. It's usually like three or four things I got going on. Uh, but I didn't plan on vlogging because I usually give it a few days for me to do new stuff, but I've been doing a lot of 3D printer stuff. Good number of the printers are running. So let's see what I've got going on. Orange Storm Giga, you saw the previous videos with that big mold thing that I printed for that trillion dollar company in New York. How, on a holding pattern right now because they may want more of them. So I don't want to get into another big print on the Orange Storm Giga until I have some clarity on whether or not they want more. Because if they want more, I want to go ahead and get that order filled, get it out. So it's just kind of sitting there waiting. Still got the Pet G loaded in the Infinity S1, which has been so good in keeping the filament loaded. Fantastic product, link in the description below. Up here on the Cobra, yes, it's Rip Van Winkle, Cobra One. I don't run the Cobras really at all anymore because they're slow, they have problems, they're inconsistent. I have much better printers uh, down here, but I wanted to print a whole bunch of something that I have here on my Flash Forge that I just finished up. I took it off, looked at it, made sure it fit, and then I put it back in the Flash Forge so I could take it out for the video, giving you the illusion that it's fresh off the plate. And so I got more of them going up here on Cobra One, just loaded up some fresh filament. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. See, that's the problem. Another problem with the Cobra is the, uh, the filament can get a little squirrely because the head, print head goes to its home position way up there. Uh, but I've got a whole plate of those cone things going on. What are those, you ask? We'll take a look at that. Loaded the bed up, slathered the bed in the nanopolymer adhesive for good bed adhesion, because that was one of the issues in, uh, that the Cobras encountered. So I've not, sla I've not slathered, I'm just gonna call it slathered from now on. Uh, went ahead and slathered it in the nanopolymer adhesive. Bamboo P1P. Ugh. It's like one problem after the other with this thing, but it's because I don't maintain it. I'm not diligent with my maintenance. So had to pull the AMS apart, the first AMS, because one of the tubes had blown out. So I took the opportunity to change out all the tubes. So we're back in operation there. I'm gonna just show you uh, the file of what I'm printing here because it's, yeah, I just started. All right, so let's go in the land of make-believe and see what all these things are about. All right, let's make a little pit stop over here on the A1. The A1's in the middle of an active print right now. It's one of those DeWalt tool holders that I was talking about previously. So I had to make some modifications. Let's just go out in the building and show you. So it's in the middle of the heat. I don't know when this video is gonna publish, but right now that big heat dome, today is the hottest day. The heat index is 114, <laughs> but it is, uh, it's pretty hot. And so I'm kind of doing inside projects. That's probably why I'm doing so many 3D print things because I can't do my outside work. Let's go in the building where it's surely <laughs> super duper hot. Oh man, a black shirt was a poor choice. So previous vlog, I was highlighting that I want to print mounts for all my DeWalt tools just to organize them and I designed a little sort of bracket thing. Is that a the bugs man? I designed this bracket thing to go on this here U-line gravity shelf. And so if I can get it off, you might remember I was talking about not wanting to have to lift up the tool and then the whole bracket comes off. I wanted it to kind of clip into here, but I didn't want to drill. And so I made something that clipped into here. It's just it's a little squirrely to get off. A little squirrely to get off, just like my wife. Don't worry, she doesn't watch. All right, just a little encouragement. This is not the final version either, so if I break this thing, it's not a big deal. Come on, I'm burning tape. There we go. I'm gonna go talk about this inside because who's oh, hot? All right, let's try this again. I recorded about 10 minutes <laughs> worth of vlog and I wasn't recording the whole time. The A1, fin uh, Cliff notes, the A1 finished. I was funny too, that sucks. Uh, the A1 finished as I was talking, uh, so this is the DeWalt tool mount that I was printing on the A1, and this is the one we just took off. I just went into Tinkercad, made some holes in the back so it could clip on and put little nub semicircles here so it would clip in and lock into place. And I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'm constantly sort of getting models off Thingiverse, printables, whatever, and then tweaking it and tuning it to my specific needs, and that's exactly what I did here. I just took this model and then put it on a thing, and that's what I'm designing. What I'm reprinting it for is that all the tools are a little bit different in their battery mounts, and so this one, you can see the tool 
was hitting this. It needs to come out a little bit more, and so that's what this is. It just extended it out a little bit, uh, but I wanted to do a test fit. So let's run out in the building and do that now. It's also really disappointing because I went into a whole monologue because I was drinking a bunch of coffee and I called it a bean cigarette, and I was talking about seeing a TikTok where people call Coke Zeros fridge cigarettes, and I thought that that's just an amazing thing to say, and I call ice cream sandwiches freezer cigarettes, but post in the comments below, what's your best euphemism anyway, back out here in the heat dome. Let's see if this clip is gonna work. So, put it in here. I think uh, I don't need to remove any supports. And actually, I'm an idiot because when in Tinkercad, I used a block to uh, connect these together and I forgot to uh, adjust the block to not print into the slits in the back. So, that's complete garbage. Maybe all this heat's getting to my brain. I'm just gonna leave that whole fever dream of uh, the DeWalt mount thing in the video. You know, it's extra uh, video time. Anyway, also got in this big shipment of filament from Polymaker. Thank you, Polymaker. Someone reached out to me in a comment saying I should look into Polymaker's new high temperature filaments for my gate project, which is still holding up pretty well, but I wanted to reprint it in the high temp stuff. When I reached out to them, they were all sold out, but they were like, do you want some other filament just to try out? And then when we get the other stuff back in stock, you can have some of that too. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. So I got these filaments here. These I'm gonna use on the continuation of my property project. So if you've been following the channel, you know I'm printing my property is in a big scale model so I can use it as a tool to like plot out my little projects. And so I've got that here. This is in the lime green, and I thought this is a great opportunity to get some colors that I wouldn't ordinarily get because they're kind of muted. Uh, they're a little brought down. So we have like brown here for like the wood stuff, gray for concrete, blue for the pool, green for the grass, etc. So I'm going to be working with this uh, Polymaker Panchroma filament over here. It's matte filament, so it should give a nice finish uh, over the coming weeks as I try to fine tune my little property model thing. Then finally, what is this cone thing? So I do a lot of stuff around the house and you know, a lot of the projects are kind of, uh, you know, centric around that. I know it's in the maker space, probably a lot of you guys do stuff around your house too. And so this is actually just a standoff. It's meant to be disposable for one of these. So one of my recent projects was putting up uh, landscape lighting and I just kept adding more and more landscape lighting. And so now my idea is to put these into the driveways because I want lights cooked, baked into the concrete of the driveway. That's why I got that DeWalt tool. That's what prompted me to print the DeWalt mounts and move them around because I got that brand new hammer drill. The hammer drill is to drill out holes for these landscape lights. And so what these do is they go into the concrete and once they're in place, they are, can be serviced through the top. You can swap out the, uh, the bulbs in here. And so I'm not too worried about baking them in there. So I just core drill a two and a half inch hole, put these down in there. I'll probably use mortar, uh, just straight mortar to hold them in place. I already did, an ex uh, did one as an example. I'm not happy with it. So probably do that. But before I do any of that stuff, I wanna make sure I get the placement right. And so what I have to do is go out and just kind of set these down, wire them all in, and just kind of check the fitment uh, of it to make sure they're spaced correctly because my driveway is not symmetrical, but I want to give it you know, a proper look with even spacing. So I just 3D printed one of these stupid little things and then I'll put it in there and then it will just hold it in place and sit and keep it in a position. That way, when I rig it all up, I'll probably leave it for a few days so I can look at it at night to see how it all looks. It's got a little spot for the wire to come out here you might say, like, why didn't you just set it on the ground? It's got a flat bottom. You know, you could just set it on the ground. Well, it would fall over and get pulled around because, you know, I'm going to be tugging on the wires and all that kind of thing. This is like 50 grams of filament. I need 16 of them in total. And I got a core drill 16 holes with a battery operated hammer drill. So that's going to be a lot of charging. But it's just things like this. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm constantly saying it's things like this in 3D printing that I really love. It's these small, insignificant things. It's not the giant... 3D printed, you know, Gooner dolls or whatever, the exciting stuff. It's really stuff like this that is just very enchanting to me with 3D printing because otherwise I was gonna have to get like a stake or something like that and then hammer the stake in the ground and put a zip tie around this and then it would be all catty cornered. It would be in the grass, you know, it'd be, it wouldn't be sort of proper, but this, I can throw 16 of these on two Cobra two maxes and then have them by tomorrow. And then I could keep going in my project and it would just give me a better idea on the fitment and placement 
for these landscape lights because I don't want to screw this project up because once you cement these in, there's only one way to get them out and it ain't pretty. So I want to make sure that I get the placement right and that's what these cone things are. So that's what I'm working on today. I'd love to know what you're working on in the comments below. And of these projects, you know, even the boring ones, which do you think like, you know, oh, that's interesting. You know, I wanna do that. Or do you wanna see the end result of like the thing that the 3D print was supporting? So like the landscape lights in the driveway, that has nothing to do with 3D printing, but I'm using a 3D printed sort of thing that I made to help assist me in that project. Is that of interest? Do you think it would be of interest to others? Because I don't wanna to deviate too far from strictly 3D print content, which is what you're here for. Uh, but you know, I, to some people it might be interesting to sort of expand upon that, but not too much. These are the constant questions that keep me awake at night as I stare at the scene. Should I expand more into the driveway light project? You know, that's the kind of thing that I'm really interested to know because obviously anything 3D print related, I'll mention, but you know, how far outside of that do I go as long as it ties back to the 3D printing? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.